Hi, welcome to Conversations with Creatives. My name is Tanya Trotter and I'm the Communications Specialist for Create Birmingham. And today I'm speaking with Dr. Adrian Starks, the CEO and founder of Stream Innovations. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. I have heard about you for a long time because you're a co-starters graduate and you've been on our dream board in our office of interviews for a long time. So it's nice to finally meet you, even if it's virtual for the moment. Um, thanks for joining us, Dr. Starks. Can you start by telling us a little bit about Stream Innovations and how you got started? Stream Innovations um, was started in 2015, so we're celebrating five years this year. So okay. super excited about that. So STREAM is it's an acronym for Science, Technology, Reading, Engineer, Arts, and Mathematics. Most people have heard of STEM. More people are hearing of STEAM, but we decided to incorporate R for reading. And it wasn't done arbitrarily. It was done because we encounter a number of students, students in the reading and art area that had no idea what they could do with that passion or with that drive. So we wanted to incorporate them into our lexicon in order to be able to support them as well. So the mission for Stream Innovations is to provide exposure, experiences, and engagement around Stream to allow students to become the next problem solvers, critical thinkers, and innovators that we need to change, help change our complex world. So what we do is provide a assortment of programs specifically around engaging them to think outside of the box, have a safe environment where they can fail um, because it's challenging and not feel as if they're a failure, but that they can try again. Um, we have programs that typically start with third grade all the way up to high school. And the basis for our nonprofit, because we are a 501c3, is to support communities that are underrepresented and underserved, those that are in urban areas as well as rural areas. So we do that by partnering with municipalities um, within their local public libraries, rec centers or community centers, as well as schools. And as well, we also have a program that um, is really tailored around computer coding. And a lot of people know about that one in addition to some of our other programs. So like the rest of the world, the education system especially has had to shift quite a bit this year. Okay. How have you navigated those shifts? What challenges have you learned from? And what are your concerns or the things that you're looking forward to as we look towards a new school year um, here in Alabama? Okay. That's, that's, that's a lot. And I believe a lot of teachers, a lot of administrators, and especially parents are concerned about that exact thing. So right before COVID occurred, and we were in this space of a new normal, um, we were in the process of getting ready to dig a bit deeper and do a lot more face-to-face -face programming um, we had incorporated after school programming as well. So we do about seven different programs. And because of COVID, it forced us to consider um, the virtual space as most people have, but to also consider how can we support parents? And that was a really big part of why I started Stream Innovations. Oftentimes parents don't have access or understand really how to support this new innovative artist, so this new innovative engineer that they may have in their home. So they're looking for additional things to supplement or enrich what um, their child is already doing at school. So for us, our focus has always been how do we provide programming and activities and projects for parents so that parents can help their child at home. So this is kind of a really good shift in turn for us um, with a lot of our hands-on program where we can 
be able to bring it to students in their home. Mm -hmm. Currently, we also are doing a virtual boot camp, and this is the first time we've ever done that. Um, I was not a, a huge fan of, of doing a virtual program, um, and that is because doing a Zoom program and teaching is just difficult, and I know many, many teachers um, that are accustomed to teaching face-to-face -face understand that. It's difficult to gauge motivation and as well as to make sure that you hold a student's attention. But this summer, um, we are getting ready to go into our third week of programming of a six week program where students are learning app development, computer hardware repair, and we're getting ready to launch a student run tech company. So we are super excited about that. Um, you know, I was hesitant to do it, but students called us and called me through their parents to say, is Dr. Starr going to have the coding boot camp again this summer? Because this is our fourth summer having it. And they did not want to miss out on being able to advance within our program. So we figured out how to do it virtually. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we were not taking new students. And that is because um, once a student goes through our program, we give them a laptop. So we were completely confident that all of the students that we were working with had a laptop and had the internet. And they also had this peer-to-peer -peer relationship with other students that could help them to be able to push through more rigorous um, programming. So that's how we've shifted a bit um, in the COVID space. It's, it's challenging because a lot of our students would still like to do some face-to-face -face programming. And on Fridays for our coding boot camp, we normally do a virtual field trip. So we've had to do that um, where business owners and tech companies, they would be able to show us through their, show us around their company and meet some of their employees virtually. But it's nothing like actually being there. So those are some of the small changes that we've had to make adjustments to we will get ready to launch our programs for younger students, where it's a lot of hands-on activities um, later on in July. And that's because it just takes a lot more to figure out how can we really support parents. Um, a lot of parents are looking for ways to keep their child's attention. And sometimes it's a, a mixture between, can I sit them in front of the computer looking at you and go do work? <laughs> Or can I give them something that's really engaging? Yeah, I know. <laughs> can, um, can it be interactive where I can do something with my child and know that they're learning something new? So, you know, really trying to figure out a good mixture between the two. Mm -hmm. um, because we work with students that are at least in third grade, um, the challenge of having something for your younger kids is not really what we're going to be able to help solve. But I'm excited to see within the school system, this need to link, think outside of the box. And I believe for a number of years, maybe even decades, um, within the education system, we've done a lot of the same things. We've tried to make improvements, but we've never considered thinking outside of the box. And in a virtual space, you have to think outside of the box. There are no old norms, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, many parents are trying to consider if they will be allowing their children to go back to school because of COVID. And there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of stress. And the bigger thing is that parents don't want their children to miss out on a great learning opportunity. And for STREAM, what we want to be able to do is be a stronger partner with schools as well as with parents to make sure that the anxiety around if their child will have an enriching activity or project or program and experience um, that we'll be a part of that conversation with them. Well, it seems like, although it may have felt challenging to think outside of the box in this new way with such quick turnaround, I would say that the silver lining for me as a parent and listening to you also is that we are challenging ourselves to think differently, to find new ways to engage with our children and for them to engage um, virtually and educationally. 
I am not surprised that you're an outside of the box thinker because Stream Innovations is a relatively new venture for you. Um, your background is actually in biological research. Yes. Were you always sort of an innovator and outside of the box thinker as a child or a young woman? And how did you make the leap from working in a more medical research field to education? So as a kid, I wanted a marker school for Christmas and that is my story. And, you know, for many kids in my generation now, I kind of feel, oh, you had the Toys R Us catalogs, which you don't have anymore. I agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you had service merchandise or JC Penney's. <laughs> you would go through those magazines and, you know, around Christmas time, you would kind of tag the ones that you wanted. And I always wanted science stuff. Um, it allowed me to not just escape my environment, but it allowed me to go and explore environments that um, were new and engaging, whether it's plants or insects or, or who knows, um, all the different things I was doing as a kid. That always excited me. Um, I also enjoyed art. So I would paint and things of that nature, but I did not know what I could do um, with the art degree, or I didn't think I was that great, to be honest with you. It was kind of more so a hobby. So over the years, um, science intrigued me and I could see myself doing it. I can envision the changes that I can make in research as far as um, I've been doing cancer research, like the first cancer research program I attended was at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. And that was my junior year in high school. And then from there, every summer I did programming um, as far as going to the University of Michigan to do programming as well. So a quick plug for my alma mater. I graduated from Alabama a and University, um, which is a historically black college and university. And had an opportunity to continue to push boundaries. And I wanted to do that in science. So I then went to Maryland to pursue my PhD in biological sciences and quantitative genetics. And with that program, um, my dissertation was looking at how age impacts quantitative traits. And those are things that you can count like the number of days that you live or how many children you have. So we were doing that with fruit flies and understanding how aging impacts um, the genes that a fruit, a fruit fly has. So from there, shifted to cancer again, <laughs> and more so looking at cancer disparities. So understanding from the fruit fly perspective that fruit flies are different. They have different genomes. Humans are different. You know, our genomes are, you know, close to 90% similar, but we have genes that are expressed differently. And what we were doing at the National Cancer Institute, which is where I did a postdoc, was understanding why um, European Americans had higher rates of incidence for breast and prostate cancer, but African Americans had higher mortality rates than European Americans. And trying to understand what was the biomedical reasoning for that. So what I thought was really amazing was the lab that I was working in, we wanted to understand how stress impacted cancer progression. And one of the things that he wanted to look at was how racism and discrimination could impact cancer progression in metastasis within patients um, and how that could potentially impact mortality rates. So yes, that's exciting. Yeah. That is innovative. It's a game changer. Should maybe have still been doing it. But the difference is while I was in Maryland, so I was in Bethesda, I was still connected to social media. And I'm originally from Fairfield, Alabama. And the community that I knew was not the same community that was there now. So, you know, looking back, I have classmates and I have. Um, alums from my high school, Fairfield High School, that are attorneys, that are doctors, that are scientists, that are football players, that are 
barbers that are massage therapists that they do a lot of different things. And unfortunately, I didn't see students that were graduating believing that they could do those things as well. So my original thought was to come back to Birmingham in the midst of finishing up my postdoc before going to do a second postdoc and start a nonprofit around STEM. I was not gonna go all the way to stream. And my idea was to come for a month, check the lay of the land out, get it together, go back to Maryland, run it from Maryland. And with Buddy running Create Birmingham and any other founder, CEO of a nonprofit, everyone knows you do not run a nonprofit from afar. <laughs> That is just not even possible, especially a new nonprofit. <laughs> so because relationships are so important, you know, having relationships with your, your customers, whether it is a school or a city, having relationships with your parents, having relationships with students, and most of all, having relationships with partners, other people that connect to your mission and your vision, and they want to be able to support you to go through that and being able to impact the community. So... Five years later, I'm still here. <laughs> and the first year we started it, it was um, just three programs that we were going to do. And that was a partnership with a library, with our program called Checkout Stream. And then a partnership with a rec center where we would do Stream Saturdays, which is an extended program. And then the partnership with the school, which is our coding boot camp. So for me, Innovation has been a part of all of that and being able to think outside of the box from imagination as a kid with a microscope to having some very interesting beliefs of what I could do by coming back and starting a nonprofit and being able to inspire other students. And we call our students innovators um, by inspiring other innovators to follow their passions and do the things that they absolutely love because we need them to be excellent. We need them to solve some very complicated problems. And I think because of COVID, we see that even more. There's the different times across history, but in my lifetime, this is one where people look to scientists in a way that they didn't look to them before. There was a healthy respect for it, but hoping that they would do the thing that they love and do it well and put in the hours so that they can support the rest of the world. And I think in many professions, not just science, um, being able to use the thing that you love to impact the world around you is extremely important. Well, that's beautifully said. And I, I love that you call, you, you actively call the students innovators now because I really do believe as a mother, what you go ahead and plant into the mind of a child is it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so I remember reading a long time ago that if you wanted your children to be helpful around the house or with different projects or helpful to each other with their siblings, you, instead of saying, oh, thank you for helping, to call, to actively call them helpers. Like you were such a helper. And so I feel like by calling, engaging with children that way and calling them innovators, they take that as part of their identity and want to continue that. I love the idea of instilling that, especially in young girls. And I love that you were circling <laughs> microscopes in the, I haven't heard someone reference service merchandise in forever. <laughs> I mean, I'm right there with you. We, we are the same age. But I, um, you are actually a triple AS, I think I'm saying that right, STEM ambassador. Yes. And you have a program that focuses on middle school girls. And I, I want to hear more about that. I, I have a daughter and knowing that that's a resource for her one day, she's too little for it now, is something that's really hopeful and exciting to me. Sure. So AAAS, which is the um, Advancement for mm -hmm. the American, the Association, excuse me, the Association for the Advancement of Science, 
um, partnered with Lighter Hills Philanthropies um, to have a If Then ambassadorship. So there were 125 women selected across the country to become ambassadors for STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And I was selected one of two from Alabama to be an ambassador. And the mission of this ambassadorship is to inspire girls to be STEM amazing people. And one way that they did that was they brought some amazing women together. I'm a fan girl of these women. Um, the mission of it is if you support a girl in STEM, then she can change the world, which is why you have if then. So the ambassadorship started last year. And this past May, they were going to do something that was completely record breaking, that has never been done in the US. And that is have a 3D life size printed statue of each woman displayed in a Houston, Texas um, park. Unfortunately, because of COVID, didn't happen. So hopefully we'll see it in 2021. But what Lida Hill Philanthropies and AAAS and a lot of the partners that have been a part of that what they want to do is put a huge circle around and highlight and punctuate the importance of having images of women and girls in STEM. So something that I have seen in our programs is that you usually have 50-50 participation with girls in our coding boot camp as well as some of our younger programs. But oftentimes, even if our girls are really articulate, they are you know, great problem solvers, they're great at putting things together, they don't see themselves as being able to do that. They don't see that as a potential career or um, passion that they should pursue. And sometimes they don't see themselves as smart. So that is why it's even more important to have more women being highlighted and showcased in media. Gina Davis is one of the partners. Um, and we know Gina Davis from I think Alien and a number of other movies. She has done a number of things as a partner with this um, kind of movement to support women in STEM, to give a platform for women to see, girls to see themselves in movies. So one thing that Stream Innovations recently did was we are working with the CBS TV show, Mission Unstoppable. And it is a Saturday morning show that showcases girls and women in STEM. And earlier in January, we did a small call to have girls that were in middle school to come and recreate some of their projects. And recently, super excited to say, um, the CBS um, Mission Unstoppable show featured us on their social media platform. So what we'll be doing is continuing to showcase girls particularly those that are from Alabama, that are African-American, that are white, that are Hispanic, that are Indian, all of the different beautiful races and cultures that are here in Alabama. I want Stream Innovations to be able to use our platform to lift them up and to show them how cool it is to do science with technology or engineering or math or any of those combinations. So because of my background in STEM, I have a personal um, passion and just mission to be able to see other girls that look like me in those spaces. But I also understand the importance of STEM and now for us, STREAM is a team sport. We need girls as well as boys and we need boys and men to see the contributions and the values that girls and women bring to the table and the importance of having the best minds at the table to be able to solve complex problems in our world. Well, I feel like our future looks a little bit brighter because of your work, Dr. Starks. Oh. And I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today and explain all the things that you do. Um, you are definitely a crown jewel in our co-starters crown. So. We are excited to have you as one of our alumni and as a Birminghamian. I'm glad that you didn't go back 
to Maryland <laughs> because <laughs> it does make me proud and I love being able to showcase all the people are doing cool things right here in Birmingham, Alabama. So thank you for being a part of that. And thank you for being a part of our day today. I really appreciate talking to you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate being able to share a little bit of what we do, of what we do. And hopefully if there are people that are interested in knowing more about us, you can always go to our website, dreaminnovations.org. We are across every social media platform for Stream Innovations, Twitter, Stream Innovate. We would love for you to follow us, learn more about what we do, volunteer, donate, um, have your children participate in our programs and be able to show them as well the cool things that you do as an example for the cool things that are done in Birmingham. We love to have more people participate with us. All right, well, thank you so much. And I hope to hear more about everything as it develops please keep us posted Thank you. thanks Thank you. and and i'll talk to you soon bye